Hey guys, what is up? I am Double Driven. It's Monday, it's Ladder Leverage Day, and we have the number two player from Pro Rank last season, Green Knight. What's up, buddy? How's it going today? I'm really good, man. How are you? Oh, doing awesome. You created this list. Uh, this is your, f is this your first like optimized list of good run? I think everybody's still like kind of tinkering. It's some. It's 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 fairly optimized. I've played like 22 games with it yesterday, so I'm kind I'm kind of proud to 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 say that it's it, there shouldn't be too many holes in it for now. Right. Uh, and it's a it's a lot of math. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it, you gotta you gotta be quick on your plays, like you said. Uh, you gotta you gotta think a couple you know two moves ahead or so because it, it's uh, yeah. It might be a little bit harsh for beginner players to try and pilot this deck. Definitely. Yeah, um, just click and, and clicking. Practice definitely makes perfect. You want to be able to see the plays quite quickly, which just takes practice with the deck. And then once you can see the plays quickly then you actually have the time to do it right, right. yeah <laughs> because you, you just gotta get accustomed bit... and i guess it helps too that you, you're running into a lot of um, you know syndicate so you're running into king of beggars you're running into good run because everybody wants to play the new leaders so that kind of helps on seeing what you know your opponent's gonna somewhat play mm -hmm. but um yeah good runs is the leader um she's got really great synergy with uh bincy where's she at Bincy, she's third from top. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, because she instantly jumps up to what, uh, 13? 13, yeah, and she continues to grow. Right, and then uh, Renew's in here because you got a lot of really, really crazy Renew so, targets. Renew, um, I like the Renew in the deck. Um, I could easily see it being cut as well, though. Right now, like, obviously, your main target for it is Siggy Reuven, just because he's so good. Yeah, yeah, like, just getting... Third. Nine. 13 for 12 with Intimidate. Yeah, that and it, it just... Uh, pulling out the Redanian, pulling out the Flying Redanian. Yeah. Um, and just fueling, fueling all of your cards. Right. Yeah, it's it's absolutely massive. I mean, it, like you said, you, you thin your deck with the, the Flying Redanian. You get your coins that can't be interact with, so they're just there. Mm -hmm. um, for your, your future spenders, it's just... it's. He's crazy good. He might be the he might be the best card in the set so far. I mean, he might be the best. Like, because he fits in every he fits in every deck, and he gives you pretty yeah. much if you build the deck correctly, you get the max points. He's, he's probably the strongest card Syndicate have got. One of them, um, you could say, uh, Tin Boy is is the other. Yeah. Um, but he's also, it doesn't mean he's the most over-tuned or overpowered or whatever. Um, he is 12 provisions after all, it's quite expensive. Right. So the other Renew target typically would be something like Philippa. Maybe Moreels can be a, a solid tall punish. Or just maybe the removal is just that valuable to you that you want the 4 damage. Right. Um, and then even rarely, but sometimes you want to go for Caleb, a brother... Or the freak show yeah. just because you desperately need a coin spender and although renewing a seven provision coin spender is not like amazing renew value if you literally have nowhere to dump your coins then all of a sudden you look at that renew as being worth like 15 however many points right because those coins would have just been wasted otherwise right yeah it's one that's one thing where you got to get used to like it's not like you play points, you know, or you're look trying to set up like a scorch or something like that. You need to look at what your your cards can spend, and then look at what you know how they can dump those coins so that you can get more yeah. of them. Yeah, the deck's it's, very combo oriented, so yeah. the flexibility is really nice. Yeah, there's just a lot of uh, a lot of number crunching in it. <laughs> it's for sure. <laughs> right? It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, the flying redaining kind of sad. It doesn't have a premium yet, but. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> it's uh, it's an, a fantastic card. I mean, if your opponent kills this, you max out coins again. It comes out again. You get it out with it, with Ziggy Reuven. So, it's just so good. It's a it's a it's a really really great card. And um, it's one of and Philippa's Philippa's a great card as well. I think like of all the great cards Syndicate have got, she's maybe not overpowered. I think she's probably just she's you could you could nerf her a provision. 
or something like that, and she'd still see play, she'd still be really good. Yeah. But just... I don't think she needs it. I think she's just uh, on a nice... Um, I think they got this card right, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's muzzle with no downside. Like, you just get their thing. It's just... It's, I yeah, think it's, it's but amazing. she also, if you do the maths on her, if you're just playing her for value, you still need to steal a 7 for her to be a 10-point card, right? Right. If you steal a 7, that's a 14-point swing plus the 3 body. It's a 17-point swing, but you spent 7 coins, right? Right. So yeah, a lot of people aren't looking at it. They're looking at, like, muzzle, where it's like... Yeah, oh, they're just like, oh, that's a 17-point Philippa. And it, uh, yeah, you, you use the coins you, to get there. You have to subtract the coin investment as well. And she's she's only really good at the higher coins. Um, but the utility of being able to steal an engine, to steal um you know, in like in the mirrors, for example, you could steal their flying Redanian. Which is like yeah. effectively like eight points of carryover into every future round. Wow. Yeah, that <laughs> that's pretty nasty. Um It's pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, Hengath, really nice uh, addition. There's a lot of damage in the deck. I mean, you got stuff with Hen bounties and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll Hengath's just such a strong card. If there's ever a deck where you can set this up pretty easily, it's always worth considering it. Yeah, because I mean, you, you get your opponent's strong. cards and fresh off the bat. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's stupid good. Um, mm -hmm. Morlise, uh, just a really nice removal tool, or just. If you have last say and you got the coins, you just completely nuke something. It's just, it's pretty versatile. It lets you spend coins. <laughs> yeah, or... that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I like the card art. Oh, absolutely. Of, uh... yeah, I made this one premium for sure. He's a, dis a disturbing character, but yeah, definitely a cool card. Cool he looks card like design. one of the pirates off Pirate, the first Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know why, but... Um... I mean, his damage 4 ability... Um... It's kind of like Ifrit and Regis Bloodlust, um, but I definitely like these double barrel cards that are like have like uh, multi-function. Yeah, yeah, that have basically options. versatile cards. Yeah. Yeah, I, lo I love cards that give you, you know, like now before the only way you can get options really was melee and range. Now you got you know tribute or no pay the tribute. It's just they're adding more layers to the game, and it's just. It's, yeah, it's, it's and it's really good. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely amazing. Uh, Caleb, this card's gonna scare the shit out of people when they see it because the minute you put this thing down and you got units on the board, man, they're gonna cry because you start putting these bounties out, man, and it gets ugly yeah. fast. It gets ugly fast. This card, I mean, I'm not even gonna pretend otherwise. This card's overtuned, in my opinion. It's really good. Um, like, you, you think about it, he's 5 base, 8 provisions, and you get 3 profit for playing him. That's already an 8 for 8. Right. Yeah, now, you can choose, you place a bounty, for those of you who maybe don't know how bounties work just yet. Um, you get you get the coin, if you kill a bounty card, you get the coins back based on its base strength. Yeah. So if you kill a 5 base strength, you get 5 coins back. Five base strength is really common. So you pay three coins to apply the bounty, and then you get five back for killing it. So you get two two coin profit from from Caleb there. You can do this multiple multiple times, um, <laughs> especially with Bersodi or the Freak Show. It's just it just sets up like some kind of a chain reaction machine gun, especially when you've got cards like Gudrun and Siggy Reuven to sort of fuel. These the the damage dealing cards like you uh, old and freak show, um, even the executioner. Once it has bounty, and the, it and the straight, executioner, yeah, yep. it's straight damage. I mean, it just if yeah. you actually had time to take notes and you know count all of your bounties and how many point how many coin profits you got in the round, you wouldn't you'd be surprised because Caleb probably comes out at the end of the round quite often as being like fifteen points plus. Yeah, absolutely. I could, for, I, for, for eight provisions, like... Yeah, I mean, if he gets three bounties out and you still have your leader ability, you got three cards that you're going to kill to get your coins back. And it's just... it. This, this so, and Bersodi, last say, is just nine times out of ten. Of course. Of it's, course it's, you're, you're gonna not always going to fulfill the bounties, right? He, He's not always a 15-point card. I shouldn't exaggerate. But 
he's always at the very least an eight point card with the potential to be crazy, right? And he yeah. probably they probably need to lower his floor a little bit, maybe. Right. Maybe make him like a six for eight on the drop and then with the potential to grow. Yeah, I will I will say that if you play this deck for this this season, you're probably gonna need a new mouse by the end of the month because you're gonna be <laughs> right, you're gonna be right clicking the shit out of the, the button here. Yeah, man. It's yeah, yeah. insane, man. Holy cow. These um, brothers though. These yeah, the, brothers are so good. Yeah, they uh I mean, they're they're fine the way they are. It's just the, the thing is, is they just get infinite value from the bounties, you know, or, or you know, the freak show. It's like, yeah. So you've got Uald who can deal damage on his own, very reliably. So you can use him to kill bounties, and then you've got Horst, who can boost the freak show. So what you do is you, if you get these two together, you just boost the freak show up. You spend all of your coins with Horst boosting the freak show. And now you've got no coins left, you use Freak Show's Insanity ability, which is just to damage units. And because he has so much health, he can just he can just clear boards. Yeah, it's um, I, I think they're gonna they're either gonna get rid of his um I think they gotta get rid of his spending ability. It, 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 even if they don't, it's still gonna be stupid. But I mean he's, this... he's a six for six with just so much utility and and uh, manipulation of the opponent's board right yeah a it's synergy synergy with the bounty cards as well as just being a coin spender as well yeah it's so it, good it's yeah, very it, very good if, if if horse is on the board in this thing if if you get horse to stay on the board and you have freak show in the in your hand just get ready just because if this thing lives just get ready to just click on horse <laughs> click on thing and then just start clicking everything on the board as quick as you can because it's going to be a huge, huge swing. Uh, Tom, no, we got, yeah. Uh, go ahead. This card's this card's um, it's it's a solid card, six for six, with the ability to destroy an artifact. Which, if your opponent has an artifact, usually going to be worth it. This card can totally be cut from the deck, though. Like I just I decided on this card like last night, and you know, a few hours before that, I had a different card in the deck. Yeah. Um, this is definitely. This is kind of like a, you can put anything you want there, really. So a, an example alternative would be to play Fisher King or a different seven, and then drop down one of the executioners to a four, because you don't really need double executioner, but ex double executioner is still quite nice. It means you've always got those damage dealers. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of there was a ton of bronze cards added to with the syndicate, and a lot of them they're just engines. They, it, so if you're able to pull them with you know summoning circle it uh if you could take that away from them it's yeah it's gonna be and that's massive. that's ultimately why i decided on this card because i was like you know i, I don't want to lose to people playing summoning circle in a long round need right. to punish them with the tunnel drill absolutely yeah and it's <laughs> i mean as long as you have two coins in the, in the bank you know it's gonna play instantly so right pretty great now this was a card i haven't played yet and i'm i'm really impressed with it it's it it's almost. I think it's almost better than Swindle because it, it corrects your hand kind of. Eavesdrop, Eavesdrop, and Swindle. They're similar cards because they're just instant profit, no unit, crime cards, right? right. Um, but we can get to Swindle in a second. I think Eavesdrop. This card is basically. It's it's kind of like a scald, right? If we if we say that profit four is worth four points, which in reality, Profit 4 is sometimes worth even more than 4 points. Right. Like, quite right. quite often, Profit 4 is worth more than 4 points. Um, this is a 4 for 5, which puts a card in your hand at the bottom of the deck. Now, assuming that card is just maybe a 4 provision bronze, or maybe even a 5 provision bronze that you don't particularly need, um, that's that's pseudo-thinning. It's it's Because you're never going to see that card again. You've made your deck more consistent. You're going to find your golds. Right. So it's kind of like old Scald before he got nerfed down to three. Right. So this card might be a little overtuned. And yeah. it can also be carryover as well. Like, right. you can spend this card in round two. Um, like. Yeah, it's going to keep you from drawing junk. You, you can plan, spend this card in round one or round two. And if you, don't, if you don't actually use those coins, those coins are actually carryover into the next round. So it's, it's like a Scald. It's thinning your deck. 
just as like a four for five, in this case, maybe even more than four for five, and with carryover potential. Seems really strong to me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan now. I mean, after seeing how it can, even too, like if you brick your, you know, your Raiders, you know, you still gain four coins and, and you put it on the bottom I, of the deck. It's And, I'm, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, they should nerf it. I think the reason it's so strong, uh, the, the way it, the reason it seems so strong is because other factions don't really have this, and perhaps they should have, um, you know, more more cards like this in other factions. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan, man. I, like, I like I like the card a lot, definitely. Yeah, I mean, just just being able to put the put your junk on the bottom of the deck. I can't tell you how many times we put, you know, the Eternal Fire Disciple on the bottom of the deck. You yeah, know, just or the Alchemist. Um, it's just. I, I think that's massive, man. I think that's absolutely and massive. Poor back alley chemist, always getting shuffled. To the <laughs> yeah, it's it's. A I shame. mean, that's the the funny thing is, <laughs> he's a six for four. The back alley chemist, he's just a solid six for four, and most of the time, that's just not good enough. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I mean, when you got a card that can play for ten instantly, yeah, it's kind of tough. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, the executioners they're really nice to pair up with the uh, you know your um the bounties and then if you got max coins you can just one for one bounty on them and just instantly take something out get your coins ready it's it's a click fiesta <laughs> so it's just it's yeah. it's crazy executioner man. he's like five for five profit two but with with the upside of just being able to clear the opponent's board so pretty good upside for a five provision card <laughs> yeah it just yeah you just you you get a five you kill a five next one you know if it has a bounty you kill a three you know you get three coins but it just it just steamrolls so fast it almost you almost get punished for playing you know units that are just like five six strength because it's if it's oh if it's not over nine i mean it's it's gonna die <laughs> Yeah, it's it's insane. It's very true. Uh, so um, yeah, the Sewer so Raiders, yeah, very they're... solid card, right? I mean, we see cards like this in other factions, like uh, uh, Mahakam Volunteers, uh, and monsters. both six for five. We have Riders, uh, Sentinels, those five provision cards, and there's also six provision muster cards as well. Right. Um, which are which are good, and there's four provision muster cards in other factions as well. Right, and you all got... these muster cards, are, they're they're great. They're just they're just thinning bronzes, and I think every faction needs to have that option to uh, to thin to make your deck more consistent. Right, yeah, and I mean you got the you got the both answers on demand right here. You got profit, you got swindle, both of them. Oh yeah, you can you can hit the condition you... immediately. So sewer raiders is. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe they're a little bit too good because not because they're too overpowered or anything, but compared to the other factions, maybe their condition is the easiest, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, it, it's board four is ridiculously easy to achieve. Yeah. And uh, next we got swindle. I mean, this is a this is a nice uh, opener. You know, if you don't want you give your opponent anything to interact with, you just play this. You get your worst case scenario four coins. And you got your raiders get, coming out if they're in the hand. I think it's pretty great. Swindle, it's it's an interesting card. Um, it can be frustrating because in this deck, you want to hit. You quite often want to hit um, nine profit because then you pull your flying. Um, you pull your flying Redanian from the deck. Right. Um, so if you play double, you could play, for example, a swindle and an eavesdrop, or double swindle. Um, and if your swindles low roll and hit four, then you're going to be at eight, and it's just annoying. You'd rather you go five on one of them. That's so it can frustrate you like that. That's that's but, how it works, man. Sometimes crime doesn't yeah, always yeah. pay, man. You might crime. Some yeah. Sometimes crime doesn't always pay. That's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but still. I think I think I'm not usually a fan of RNG cards for RNG sake, um, but because it's such a low end of the spectrum, because it's a four provision card. I think yeah, it's, it's not fine. Wheel of Fortune. Like you're not gonna win the game because you, yeah, you're not gonna win the game because you high rolled and hit six points on your four four provision card, right? Right. Um, and then uh, your four provision cards, uh, Back Alley Alchemist and Fire Disciple. They're both, you know, this one more so is just 
He's cuttable. He's just a filler six for four, right? Yeah. But he's also a reliable six for four. Yeah. Um, the fire. Like you can play around with it. For yeah. example, you could take out one of the sea jackals or one of the swindles, and you could throw in a couple of peasants. Um, that's definitely something you could do if 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 you wanted to. You could you could play some of the renegade mages. They can uh, they help with uh, if you scroll up a little bit. Uh, these guys on the right, they're just like, they're kind of like five for four, but you get the removal. Yeah, I love and, these cards, the mages. And, and they can help with bounties and stuff. Like, there's, there's, there's so many good cards. Bron yeah. Like, the bronze cards in Syndicate are really, really I love great, them. I opinion. think they're all amazing. Um, but but yeah. apart from Eternal Fire Disciple in this deck, that's the one exception. In it, This is like a swarm card. You're supposed to play this in Hamel Fire. Right. Um, where it is going to be a good card, a solid four, four for you. In this deck, it's it's you're probably your number one eavesdrop target. And if you don't have eavesdrop, then you just want to mulligan it or or just play it in round two on a dry pass or something. You don't want to play this card, right? And then um, the sea jackals. Uh, key things with this: if you are at max coins, you can hit the button twice. Uh, spend those See, two coins and it it boosts three twice. Sea Jackal is very, very strong. Um, this is a coin dump. It's a proactive coin dump. Um, typically, most decks in other factions and probably Syndicate as well, most of the time, they don't want to keep four provision cards in their round three hands and stuff. And you will... If it's a long round three where you've got many different ways of spending your coins, you can you can mulligan the Sea Jackals. But in those sh short and medium rounds, you're going to find this card being very useful. And in round in round one as well, just to spend some coins. He gets... He's really efficient. Like, most of the cards are balanced around you spend one or two coins, and you get one or two points. This card, when you hit its Horde 7 requirement... Um, it's just simply really efficient. You spend two coins and you get three points. So, yeah, it's it's yep. amazing. It's I, he has the downside of playing very tall, right? Um, so you want to you want to be careful about how you don't you don't want to repeatedly keep dumping nine coins into him or something like that. <laughs> like <laughs> you're just asking for trouble there. Yeah, he's not Agalus, man. You. Uh... You, want, you just want to use him a couple of times, like at Horde 9, and then you go down to 7. You use him again, and then you go down to 5, but he'll be 10 points. And then maybe once you've built yourself back up, you use him a couple more times, something like that. Right. Um, or, or just as an emergency coin dump in round 3, if you've got nothing else to do with your coins. Right. Yeah, and then last but not least, the Blind Eye Apothecary. She pairs up really nice with the Freak Show. If the Freak Show goes all the way down to 1... You can uh, yeah. play the apothecary Very. and just spend one tribute, and she can heal it and boost it. It's just or worst case scenario, very, she very can just heal point. it. I mean, it's just. It's, I think if you took Freak Show out of the deck, she would still hit five guaranteed and six most likely, maybe seven sometimes. Yeah, like even without the Freak Show. So like, even without the Freak Show, she's a very solid uh, bronze. Um, with the tribute ability of cost one, combine both abilities, really nice. Um, but yeah, like you say, with Freak Show, she can just... So if he's at one strength, then that's a five point heal. So if you play her melee row, that's an eight for four. If you decide to play the tribute, then you pay one coin for an extra two points. That's a nine for four. That's Absolutely. really good. Yeah, very, very strong. Um, but, uh, before we jump into the games, guys, um, uh, like always, check out TeamLeviathanGaming.com. Right now, there's um, they're doing a series on the gangs of Novigrad right now. Currently, as we're recording this video, there's one up for the Tide Cloaks that was done by Adasama and Orphan Tears. Going over the cards on you know how good they are, whatever, whether or not you should craft them or not. Um, pretty great. There'll be more coming out this week soon, TM. But uh, those are all found at TeamLeviathanGaming.com. Um, any any other things from you, uh, Green Knight? Um, have fun playing the expansion. I know I did. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Absolutely. That... But uh, here's a couple games, guys. We'll see you at the end. 
Um, played a little. I haven't played Horson yet. Right. I've mostly been playing the Bounty deck and Good Run. Oh boy. So they were all in on. <laughs> this one seems like it's all in on Lacerate. Interesting. All and right. Francesca's a strong leader. So we drop the eavesdrop? No, eavesdrops are good for thinning. Okay. We uh, probably want to drop a jackal here. We get fill of her. We do want eavesdrop targets though. So I guess we could kick the apothecary. Um, let's see what we get. Maybe kick the executioner as well. We want him later. Okay. <sighs> So what do we lead with? Well, swindle. in order to... So we could swindle and then follow up with the sewer raiders to get the thinning done before we eavesdrop. Or we could just go right into an eavesdrop because swindle might actually be our eavesdrop target if we have two, at least because we have two eavesdrops in home. Okay, so, so eaves we're eavesdrop. Yeah, we could try this. We could brick, but I think it might be right. Otherwise, we could just send a target. So, what are we putting on the bottom? I think we drop a jackal for now, um, and then we we just we just enter in there, and we can. Uh, so, eavesdrop's a really cool card. It reminds me of Skald, Skelliger. It's four for five, and because you're placing a card at the bottom, it's effectively like thinning, right? Right. Do we so it's kind of like a do skull. Do we steal that? Ah. Uh, I mean, we're on blue coin, it's probably something we'd maybe do on red. The question is, is do we want to win the round? Because if we want to win the round, then something like Philippa or... Um, yeah, or Moriel's would make sense. They might have another one, too. Hmm... I'm not so sure. Or do we just, just play our Raiders? I mean, it gives us some carryover. Okay, let's steal it, let's snatch it. We have another eavesdrop, so we you can get our raiders out. We, buff we don't need to buff it. No, 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 I don't... I mean, it plays around Malayne to buff it, but... Um, it also plays into Cleaver, for example. Right. Ooh, we keep the points. Now do we buff it to keep him from thinning? You think he has, um... The Dryad? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we should play around, um... Sentinels. Yeah, that's a good play. Um... So yeah, we can go ahead and buff that, and then probably drop another eavesdrop, I think. And get rid of the swindle. You're safe to be oh. on the Okay, so we so we get rid of the we just get we just um, get rid of a sewer raider here, and okay. then we'll thin it. So we kind of got a punished a little bit there for uh, not thinning these out first, right? Because we could have played sewer raiders um, then before the Philippa. Yeah, then Philippa. God's blasted. What? Well, that's the that's a dead Ike. So we're really happy we didn't buff the Hawker. <laughs> and that's gotta it's gotta be eight or higher. So we don't have anything that high. So we don't really care. Question right? is, does he is he being cheeky? Maybe he has um, a way to buff one of our units. I'm just trying to think of cards that he could do that with. Uh, nothing's coming to mind. Like Nilf Knight and Neneke are two of the only cards that I can think. Of. What about uh, uh, what about uh, Thunderbolt Potion? No, that's that's your own unit. That's as only well. your own. I mean, there's nothing we can. I don't think we're gonna make a, a scaredy cat pass it. I think that's just a dead Ike. So we can just go ahead and thin our, our raiders. Well, we lost one though, right? Or does it go back into the deck? No, no, we we unbricked it with the eavesdrop. Oh, okay. So we used the eavesdrop to put the one. So we bricked, and then we just put it at the bottom of the deck. The sad thing is, is it means our eavesdrop didn't actually get its usual value of thinning the deck because we actually the card we thinned was a card we were thinning out of the deck anyway. Matron, I mean that's going to get some points for him, but it's a little bit late. I'm not so sure we care about it. I don't think. So we've, we've already spent Philippa. We, we could more. just swindle. We could swindle here, and we should hit five or six. Gotcha. And it'll pull. Oh, we hit four. We low rolled. It's not so bad. We can just play the brother next turn, I suppose. And play around Ike. Mm-hmm. 
Really? Phantom. Well, that sucks, because now well, if we buff him up, we die. Well, we just play him and we don't buff, because we want to thin the flying Redanian out, right? So... Oh, yeah, it comes out, huh? Yeah, so if we play him ranged, we get profit too. And then we just don't use we don't use the coins this turn. Harmony rarely reigns. So this is where he uses uh, flying Dania comes up. Unfortunate, the premium wasn't ready. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm sure it'll be a good one. When it comes to. So okay, we could I guess invest. One gold. We do need to play a card. We have a bunch of coins we've not spent, and it should win us the round. The question is, is maybe we could also pass. Like we just want it. We just want it to thin the. Are we gonna bleed, Francesca? I guess we could. We have a, we have um, Siggy, and we've got the leader. If we draw Bincy, then we'll be able to tempo out really hard. Okay, let's try and win the round. So we're killing the uh, Ike, or. We're um, try it. I think we need to kill the Ike because we're gonna have to buff above. We're gonna have to buff quite a lot. Yeah, let's kill the Ike. And we don't pay the tribute, right? Decline, decline, and we need to be quick and spend four charges here. Oh, I played in the scorch. <laughs> That's okay. If Scorch comes out now, we're kind of happy about that. We're he'd still up. Hu yeah, we 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 he'd get a huge Scorch on Bincy later on, and also we play the Sea Jackals as well, which get really tall. Yeah, I thought this would force him up. Yeah, that's nice. He must have ran into some. Uh, uh oh. He must have ran into some. Some Fire Swarm. He's got all the. It really is in our favor to bleed because apparently he's playing an engine deck. Um, so we want to kick either back alley chemist or the apothecary. Right, right now we don't have freak show, so probably the apothecary. Nice. Okay, there's a brother. That's good. Now I think we kick the back alley chemist. We got double executioner. That's a little bit much, but you can see our hand is really set up for. Bounties, right? Right. Um, it's kind of a shame, though. We'd love to have Bincy in this hand. Um, hmm. So, what do we want to do here? Do we just go with Last Say and Siggy and Morsodi? If we if we Siggy now, we go to max coins, and then and then the next card we play is. Uh, overkill on coins, if that makes sense. So I think we should probably lead off with something else. We should probably lead off with just an executioner or something. Oh, wait for the best buyers. So we end turn. Mm -hmm. Fisher King. Oh boy, it's a little bit slow. So we could go in with Menge, for example. We could. Um, Start getting our bounties going. So we get profit three. Um, we don't necessarily. I guess we could set up one bounty now, but we don't actually have the coins to fill it out just yet. Um, although he is melee locked, so if he has some movement, which Skoyatel often do, use it. Huh? Um, yeah, we should use it and hit it once. We could start to hit it, yeah. Because then we're at zero coins. Um, Use it one more? Yeah, sure. We, we want to kill it. For example, we could play Siggy next turn. So he's got to decide, do I want to keep bounties up or do I want to keep... Okay. So he locks that, and that's fine. We're happy that he locked that. So for now, before we play any more dudes, we could play... Um, Let's get let, let's just play Siggy. Let's just play Siggy and get um get the flying Redanian out. And then we're ready to I'm dead serious. We're ready to kill whatever he plays, basically. Thirteen points. 
the moment. I think Ooh, just, uh, what? Interesting. Very interesting. Playing I mean, around the damage, so we have to kill that's that. That's a very high base strength. So we definitely put a bounty on that, and I think we can nuke it immediately. If so I'm not that's... mistaken. Yeah, we can. We can. So we hit the, put the bounty on. Um, so do we want to... I think we want to go Executioner. Because Executioner's really good with the bounties, whereas the brother me. is just good full stop. Like, he doesn't need bounties to deal damage. This is sick. Just unlimited removal, right? Yeah. Do I use and then the we get chart? it all back. And then we can kill the Fisher King as well. Oh my and goodness. Get, and then we get... So we're at, we're still at max coins here. And we just removed his board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... That's a sad state of affairs right there. What's a renew target? So we could renew Philippa. Um, he just plays an artifact. So it is a shame that we don't have, like... We can't dump these coins into proactive points right now. Like, imagine we had... Uh, a Sea Jackal here. If we had a Sea Jackal, we could just drop it and just... You know, put all those coins into proactive points. But unfortunately we don't. Um, so we just pass, huh? I think we just pass. We've kind of done our job. We've bled. We're still. He still needs an eleven-point play here, and, and we and we're gonna we're gonna have four points of carryover, which is pretty big, especially with. Nice. Oh, and he had to use his bomb. Yeah, he had to use his bomb play, which is good for us. Is that enough? Nope. He's got to use his leader charge too. That's game. He was probably better off going a card down there and saving his leader. Unless, I could, maybe, maybe I'm, maybe his hand is really strong cards, but. But that's his strongest card, that's his. Fra Fra Francesca in general is worth more than any card you could have in hand, generally. So we drop the Apothecary again, or do we just drop the fire first? Fire Disciple, that is a card we almost never want to play. Apart from maybe round two as a little carryover play. We keep Tunnel this. Drills, it's just a six. Maybe we keep it. We definitely keep the Jackal. The Jackals are really good. Um, we kick the Apothecary here. Yeah. Okay, oh so yes, we So, Apothecary is just a four provision card, but you'll see in this game now it's probably going to be worth over ten points. And it's going to allow us to spend our coins proactively. So what do we so, what, so what's our renew? Our renew is probably Siggy at some point, not just now, because um, Siggy's going to be worth 13. We might also want to renew Philippa or Morils. Like if main Mangy. We could also consider Mangy as well. Mangy could be good. <laughs> so, do we just want to play a brother here? Maybe, maybe, maybe lead off with the tunnel. Tunnel Drill might actually find value if he has another Thunderbolt, right? So maybe not play that. Maybe just maybe swindle here. Maybe just swindle. Yep, we hit the five, and now the Redanian comes up. We missed Bincy, by the way. Um, hopefully, we'll get a next game. Well, that's not that great. So now, now we definitely just uh, play the Sea Jackal here. So we can see it comes down as a four. But when you have Horde seven or above, two coin investment gets you three points, which is really efficient. So what do I do? I hit the button? So, so we hit the button and we go down to seven and we get plus three. And then we hit the button again and because we're still at Horde seven, we get another plus three. So we just invested four coins for six points. Wow. So he's already he's already a six for four coin sink, right? Because you actually want coin spenders. Yeah, that, I had a couple problems with decks like that. I just they they I had money in the bank, but I couldn't take it out. But 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 you couldn't take it out exactly. Okay, so he's a scorch. So um, just play the tunnel drill. I mean, we could just play the brother as well. Because we could I just guess. steal whatever he plays with Philippa, huh? 
I guess the issue is if he can kill the brother. We could play, I guess... Uh, it's tough, it's tough. Alright, let's play the tunnel drill, because I don't think he's got a particularly dangerous artifact is it in his last cards. No. Like, if he has a Thunderbolt, we don't really care, right? Wolf pack. Alright. Now, I think we... We just play... We play Mangy and just... Play. Yeah, yeah, we just... No, no, they, so two strength bodies, uh, two strength, two base strength, they're not worth bounties. That no. You're actually... Um, you're, you want to damage not them first and then yeah. get the bounties. Because you're spending three coins with Menge on, a, on, on those units. You're spending three coins to apply the bounty and you're only getting two coins back for killing it. So it's not worth it. So we just play the brother? Yeah, we just play, we just play, we just play the brother, I think. And we just clear his board. Um, and then, depending what he plays, yeah. we'll see what we want to renew. We still have our leader up. We just steal whatever he plays. Yeah, I mean, I, this, I don't think there's any cards in the game that can win this for him. Yeah. yeah, he just passed. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have to use our leader this game. Just kind of... That's pretty shameful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Poor let's, guy. Let's play another one. What do we got this time? Let's hope we get Bincy. She's, uh, I think she might be. Ooh, the, the, the true deck. test. Okay. King Bounty versus boats. Who's gonna win? We got we got red coin. That's nice. All right. What's our kicks here? So we don't kick the fire disciple because that's that is the number one best eavesdrop target because it's the worst card in our deck. It's the card we literally want to go to the bottom the most. Okay. So we drop so, the alchemist. We can drop the, uh, the back alley chemist, yep. And... Do we risk it? Apo so, Apothecary is just in the deck because it synergizes with Freak Show. We don't have the Freak Show. We could kick it. That's All not right. bad. Double... I mean, double executioner, we didn't need that. Like, we have plenty of bronze coin dumps here. We wanted probably some more coin generators. Like a swindle or something. So hopefully we, we just don't want to draw the raider, right? I mean, we could we could be aggressive here. Like we don't have our swindles, so if we don't just find swindle from our from our from our eavesdrop, then we're actually going to be in a position where it's very difficult to get the flying redanian up. Okay. We could consider playing Siri um, Siggy is what I'm saying. Um, right now. Yeah, like we like we we always want a good renew target anyway, right? The only downside to this play really is if he has Philippa in hand, he could steal our Redanian at some point, which is really bad. So I think we go. go for it though. I think yeah. we just go for it. He's smiling. I'm dead serious. We got red coin. Let's abuse it. So we're already at max. So our siege, yeah, like our siege this is procked. We can get out our raiders. Yeah, we can follow up with a sea jackal. Two charges. We'll put him at ten points, oh, and then we can thin the raiders. Seven. We just thin out the raiders. We can thin the raiders first, sure. Before we eavesdrop. We don't make the same mistake last time. <laughs> ah, long ships are over races. We're always gonna play the jackal before we play the eavesdrop though, because we're at max. Yeah. This is probably gonna the jackal's probably gonna win us the round. Yeah, the jackal's gonna be massive. Um, like since we played Siggy, we really are trying to win on even here. Um or, or at least, like, if he's gonna get a pass, we want him to invest powerful cards as well, right? So, so he's play already played Boris, which is a pretty strong card. So we play uh, the brother for two? No, 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 because we lose profit. We're at max coins right now. So right now we want to play a coin spender. We want to spend some coins. So we play the jackal here, I think. Hit it. Hit the button twice. Yeah, hit the button twice. We get the we get we get six value for four coins there, which is really nice. And then we can follow up with eavesdrop, which will take us back up to nine. 
and we can spend two more charges on the Jackal. Which will take him up to 16. Caleb Mengel, push you. Okay, so he spent more reels is huge, right? That's a huge investment for him because that's his only answer for Bincy, usually. I say that, he might have a luck, but usually that's their only answer for Bincy. Uh, now that he's spent that, we're not so bothered if we give him a pass. What if he has the, the instantly kill bounty guy? But it, if we get last say, it doesn't bounty. matter. But... Oh, Graden. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, he could have that too, that's right. Um, so, for, do, does the brother get us ahead here if we invested charges? So he plays, it's six, and we have four in the bank. So that's ten. It does get us ahead two points. Can we do it? Yeah, sure, we do it. I and I think we buffed the Redanian, the Flying Redanian. We want to make it as hard as possible for him to uh, ever think about stealing that. Like right now, he'd need eight coins to steal that. That's not okay. Fair. So that, that was an eight-point tavern bro. It's not bad. I think we can. Can we eavesdrop here and get ahead? We can't. No. Uh, I mean, it's fine. I think I think we give him the pass here. Like, he's invested three quite strong golds. We've invested one strong gold, and we actually want to put one of the brothers in the graveyard anyway. So we want the Disciple out, right? Yeah, we throw the Disciple away. He's just in the deck for the Fire Sworn tag. <laughs> he's definitely the worst card in the deck. Does he keep going? Can do. Magic uh, chaos. So he places a bounty on that. That's definitely not the card that he really wants to kill here. Hmm. So do we spend with the executioner? But we don't have a, a bounty yet. We would have to use Mange in it first. Huh. We could go, I think last say is important. We go Executioner here, I think. Um, and we apply... Evil's not going anywhere. Maybe no bleeds. None. Maybe just no bleeds. Because if he forces us out with a really strong play here, then we get the maximum carry of coin carry of. There's, there's no need to it. Because now what we want to do is follow up with Menge if he continues to play. And then we can get our we can get our bounty. Well, he, the he gets his bounty going. But we get to pull that back out again. Okay, so this is what I mean. He forced us out, but we have the maximum coin carryover, and we um we also didn't invest like it might have been a mistake to play Menge first there, for example, because the exact same thing would have happened, or nearly exactly the same thing would happen. So we're out. I think we're out. Like we could, we could still fight in this round. I just don't think it's worthwhile, right? Right. Yeah, because I mean, if we don't draw one of the or the other brother or whatever, we're we're in trouble. And they don't really play artifacts, do they? So eavesdrop's not going to be too useful on the dry pass, and yes, some type, quite often they play summoning circle. So oh, okay. We want a dry pass card here. I think we kick the executioner here because it's actually our second worst card. You don't want to kick your worst card here. You want to kick your second worst. All right. So we got the renew Ziggy. Because now when he passes, you actually play your worst card, right? So we Rather play the than... alchemist. Yeah, we play the alchemist. And we carry over one coin. He carries sadly, sa sadly, one coin of carry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something. I mean, it's be It's better than nothing, right? <laughs> Hengath might be huge. Yeah, Hengath will be insane in the mirror. So I think we kick the apothecary here. Um, Swindle can go as well. It's just a four drop. Hey, there he is. 
So what did we miss? What goal? Did we miss any strong goals here? Philippa. We, we missed Philippa. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so what? How do we lead off here? I think we could, for example, lead off with Bincy and then use our leader ability um, to get the maximum value on Bincy because she grows every time you gain coins. So you do want to develop her early, unless you suspect your opponent has some kind of a tall punish. He already played Morels in round one, so unless he has Renew, I don't think he's going to have a tall punish for her. So we're going for it. And and he has last say anyway, so I think we just, I think we just, we just go Bins and go okay. Spend our leader. We only get eight points from the leader, but it's fine. It gets the flame redeem, you know. Get that value. Oh no, sorry, we got 9 points from the leader, because yeah. we actually boosted, yeah, she we boosted Bimsy by the excess amount. She gets a carry over. Now, we wish we had a Sea Jackal here, it'd be nice. We did actually mulligan a Sea Jackal earlier, I think, but right. it's okay. So he played, that's, that's, that, that's going to be a really strong sword for us. We probably want to sword that Siggy in a little bit. Right. But right now we want to play a card. Just play the executioner and do. I mean, we lose two profit. That's the thing. Yeah. Um. It's probably. It's probably okay to play freak show and just bleed twice. It sets up the hangar. Yeah, sets up the hangar, and then it spends a couple of coins so that we don't lose points when we play our our other cards. So if he was going to have something, so play the players. Most likely, yeah. So he removed the bleed there, which... is He paid two coins to remove two points of bleeding, so it's not particularly... He, he broke even. Great. He broke even there, but what it does is it tells us we should never apply more than two bleeding. Uh, so we just play the Executioner on two different units? Or do we just play the So card? what we do is is we, we we play one bleeding, right? Because that's not worth it worthwhile for him to to get rid of. Right. We just apply one bleeding to the to the Dijkstra. Alright. I'm uh, sorry, the, what, the Siggy. What card? We could play the tunnel drill. Don't think he has an artifact. Let's apply one bleeding. And one maybe one bleeding to the back as well. Like we we wanna spend some coins here. Yeah, we're sitting on a bunch. Mm -hmm. For example, now we can play Menge without losing any... Right. Ooh! Plays this Freak Show. Is there a way that we can kill that? Oh, there def there's definitely a okay, way. There's the Trissus. And I think we do. I think we do. I think we play one more Bleeding to the... the Siggy Reuben. Okay. That sets up a kill next turn with the sword. And so now I think we play the brother. Or actually, maybe, maybe, maybe this isn't best. Maybe this is best. Maybe we should be playing um, Menge now. Play Menge now. We could play Menge now and a apply a bounty to Siggy and and to the the freak show. Here. Double bounty on the on the fly, and we're up by 25. He's got to start playing his. Uh, ooh. Well, it's good we Strong got that level. out of the way. At least we got the muzzle value. Um, well, it's that. He's, I think he's playing around hand guide sword by um, by purifying the. The Siggy, and now he wants to kill our Freak Show, which is a good play. But we kill his. We just hang I mean, he's re he removed the bounties, right? Yeah. I guess it wasn't. We probably shouldn't have bountied While the cards. Was that, I think that was a misplay. Yeah, that was just that was a a daft mistake. But we still steal that, right? We could sort it. Um,
No, we don't want to sword that. We always want to take Siggy Reuven, I think, because it Siggy Reuven is four plus nine, and then we also get nine extra points on the Bimsy as well. So we just kill it with Moisey? Because if he heals that, we're in trouble. True. So do you want to play the brother, maybe? Or do we just execution it? Oh, we can't. No, it because bleed. it's bleeding. I think we play the brother here. Not Morios, it's overkill too much. Kill this. Oh, we kill this. Set 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 the DJ to one. No 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 no. Set the DJ to one. And that's it. Maybe maybe set the guy at the back to two. Yeah. <laughs> this thing because, because no no, no that's also a really nice sword for us as well. Um, like now we've got the choice, right? Swindle. Okay. Oof. So we have renew for Siggy Reuven. And we have sword potentially for Siggy Ruben. So we just sword it now before he can heal it. Question is, is do we want two Siggy Rubens? Maybe that's just too much. Because he has last say. I guess we do. I guess we just do want two Siggy Rubens. <laughs> so let's take the sword first, because then if he kills our brother, we can potentially re renew the brother, right? Right. And we use all the coins, right? We just kill everything? Yeah, yeah. We may as well just kill everything, I think. Maybe not, maybe not the Caleb. Um, actually, yeah, let's kill the Caleb because it gives him a heal target for his apothecary, right? 45. Now, how does he pull this out? I, I mean, we're going to lose 30 if he has the answer for Bincy. Yeah, but then he still has to worry about this. Yeah. If he, has, if he doesn't have Renew, he's in big, big trouble. So we just Pizza. release that. I think so. Um, yeah, we kill that because it's too much of a threat, right? I think we need to take that out. The eternal fire has to be shut. I mean, this look at this crazy Pizza. man. This look is at crazy. this Pizza. It's 30 points for 10 provisions right now. Good job, good job. So, He's gonna what's kill. our renew here? He's gonna kill like, this. That's... We can't... Oh, with Graden? You think he has a bounty and a Graden? I think he has, yeah. Possibly. Um, What's in our graveyard? Because I don't think we can go for another Siggy route. No. Because because our execution is just applying bleeding, right? Right. So I think we actually renew the freak show. And then we take out his coin spender. This. So we apply wait, 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 no no. We apply a bleed to the Because we have one coin. And then now now we use the insanity ability and damage. Kill this. So good, and concede. <laughs> I don't see how he wins. I mean, he still hasn't used three of his leader charges, so what is he using? All right. There's the Caleb, but does he actually have oil? Yeah, so his last card's Grad, and that was a good good read. Um, so we've got double bounties. Um, so we can play the Executioner here, we get two profit. So we can apply two bleeds and then do two damages, right? We can apply two bleed. Now, notice how he's placed a bounty on our freak show. Is it worthwhile for us? How does he deal three damage? I don't think he can. Well, he didn't play his own. Uh... So what we should do is we should just not do anything. I think. We just leave it. I think we should. Huh? I think we should just pass, yeah. 53 to 7. Now, I want to see this. He's playing them coins, man! <laughs> Let's see what he's got. I mean, Graden's pretty big here, but it's not going to be enough, I don't think. No. Knowledge is a weapon. 32. 
Bad, I was bad. gonna say, man, that would have been nuts if he would have beat us. And what I would have, I would have just sent that clip right to CDPR and be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, well, that's the video for today, guys. Uh, Green Knight, thanks for coming through. What do you, you got anything in the works um, on your end? Anything good coming? Any type of uh, player guides or anything like that you're writing up? Definitely. I'm. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be some some guides to come or some uh, some stuff on the website with the new expansion it's quite exciting i'll be interesting to see um if cdpr does decide to to hot fix anything um in the next in in the recent in the coming weeks but um yeah as for now i'm just enjoying it and um thanks for, thanks for having me man That's absolutely absolutely we love having you man we love having you um like always guys monday's ladder leverage we have one of the amazing Team Leviathan pros on. Um, Green Knight, number two on the ladder last season. Awesome job. Um, definitely check, check out TeamLeviathanGaming.com for the meta snapshot slash meta. And any other stuff on there, new player guides, crafting guides, and everything else, TeamLeviathanGaming.com. Like always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.